Welcome to my channel. My name is Eric Megas and I want to tell you a little bit about how we can control asymmetric photocyclo additions, 2 plus 2 photocyclo additions with our signature chiral at rhodium catalyst. Now, um, you know from your organic chemistry 101 that two alkenes can react which with each other in presence of light, UV light or visible light, depending on the situation, to form cyclobutanes. A nice reaction where two alkenes basically dimerize and we form two new CC bonds. Now, there's a problem. The problem is you can get a lot of isomers. For example, the group R1 can be next to R2, head to head dimerization, or it can be head to tail when we basically assemble them this way. So these, these are called regioisomers. Head to head and head to tail. Each of these reacher isomers can in addition form two diastereomers. I just show it for the head to head isomer. It can form what we call the cis diastereomer where the two groups point to the same direction of the cyclobutane and it can form the trans diastereomer. So these are diastereomers, cis and trans. And then to make things even worse, each of the two diastereomers can exist as image and mirror image. Now I draw again the same cis diastereomer and it can also exist as a mirror image and these two are so called enantiomers. Means in this simple reaction with the shown two substrates, oh by the way R1 has to be unequal to R2 in order to be in isomers. You can, in this reaction, you can have two regioisomers. You, each regioisomer can form two diisomers and each diisomer can form two enantiomers. But you want to get a single regioisomer and a single diisomer and a single enantiomer. How do you do this? I'll show you how we can do it with the catalyst shown on this slide our signature cyclometallated rhodium catalyst, which we call chiral at rhodium, because all the ligands are achiral, but we have a stereogenic metal center, and the stereogenic metal center leads to overall chirality. These two cyclometallated ligands, they coordinate in a way to set up a propeller so we have a left-handed propeller, that's a lambda enantiomer, and we can have a right-handed propeller, that's a delta diastereomer uh, enantiomer. These two ligands, bidentate ligands, they are configuration inert. They don't do anything. They stay in the propeller topology and they remain like this. But in addition, we have two labor ligands. They are labor, they can become removed, and when they are removed, the rhodium can interact with the substrate, coordinate to a substrate, and by coordinating to the substrate it can it can electronically activate the substrate and it can photochemically activate the substrate as I show you now in the following. Now we started with this very simple reaction shown here on the top. We took alpha beta unsaturated acyl imidazoles because we know they can bind to the rhodium because of the lone pairs and we wanted to react them with the shown butadiene here to form such cyclic butane. 
Catalyst is the complex I showed you in the previous slide. Acetone solvent and blue light as the photo um, chemical source. Now, we started initially with iridium. So same complex, but the metal iridium. And we found, yes, in fact, when we use two more percent of the iridium catalyst, we get cyclobutane formation in 63% yield. We even get a diastereo ratio, DR, 5 to 1, reasonable, but no enantiomeric excess. Means completely racemic product formation. However, when we switch from iridium to rhodium, suddenly, same reaction condition, 99% yield, 14 to 1 DR, so mainly one diastereo formed, 99% E. Basically, only one enantiomer formed. 99% E is the round ratio of the two enantiomers, 200 to 1. So really just one form. We can use catalyst loading. We can do it in presence of air, in presence of water, different solvent. Any conditions will do. We get the product with very high enantiomeric excess. We need light. Without light, nothing happens. Without catalyst, nothing happens. So, what's the mechanism of this reaction? Substrate binds with rhodium. I mentioned we have two labor acetonitriles. So, rhodium can bind in a bidentate fashion to this acyl imidazole or pyrazole functionality. By doing this, the substrates get activated and we get upon or well, this complex can absorb visible light, we get a ligand-centered excitation, means the coordinated substrate undergoes a pi pi star excitation of an electron, initially into the S1 state, after intersystem crossing into the triplet state, and the triplet state reacts with the co-substrate, the alkene co-substrate, and we get a stepwise 2 plus 2 cycloaddition to get the rhodium coordinated cyclobutane, which then can dissociate. And the steric chemistry of the rhodium, the rhodium is chiral, controls the dia and enhances selectivity in a perfect fashion. In addition, the rhodium has a very, very important function for the photochemistry. Because only upon rhodium coordination, this substrate can absorb efficiently visible light. Look at the UV vis spectra here on the right. Only the substrate. Now I'll switch to the laser pointer. Um, laser pointer. So only the substrate itself, dotted line, basically no visible light absorption. Gray line is a catalyst, the initial catalyst. We have a band here in the visible, so a little bit li visible light absorption. But when the substrate binds the catalyst, we get this fat black, black line. And you see we get a very strong absorption in the visible region. And that's the complex shown here. This complex can is absorb visible light. It's our antenna that sequesters all the visible light and then leads to the ligand-centered excitation that can do the 2 plus 2 photocycle addition. Now, the fascinating aspect is that rhodium, perfectly suited for this asymmetric 2 plus 2, but the rhodium, not at all. It can catalyze this reaction. We get the cyclobutane, but we don't get any enantiomeric excess. How can this be? And our hypothesis is, and these studies are still ongoing, is that, as I mentioned, the rhodium leads to ligand-centered excitation, but the rhodium leads to metal to ligand charge transfer. So the rhodium complex, the rhodium binding to the substrate, in the on, on photo excitation, a rhodium-centered electron gets transferred into an antibonding orbital of the coordinated enon. And that leads to an MLCT state. One resonance structure shown here. In this MLCT stage, we state we think uh, or it will not, won't be able to catalyze to undergo a two plus two photocyclic addition or a two plus two cyclic addition. But instead, we think it can transfer energy maybe to non-coordinated substrate, leading to racemic two plus two, whereas the rhodium can give us 
asymmetric 2 plus 2. So just change the metal. In the otherwise, same ligands from iridium to rhodium allows us to do asymmetric photocyclodition. And in, on the net last slide, I want to just show you how useful this reaction is. We can use not only alpha beta unsaturated acyl imidazole, but also pyrazole. They are synthetically much more useful because they can hydrolyze. You can cleave the CN bond easily, replace it against whatever you want. We can form esters, amides, carboxylic acids, whatever you want. We can make very complicated structures as shown here. Adjacent all carbon quaternary stereocenters, we generate three stereocenters and we can completely control the stereochemistry. Very high yields, very high DRs, very high EEs. It's a perfect reaction. And you know what? Any, any bachelor students can do it because open flask conditions are fine. Air moisture don't matter. You can even take any solvent you have on the bench. Not only acetone works, but DMF, methane chloride, and a lot of other solvents work. And um, you get always a product, high yield, high steric control. Really nice reaction. So if you're interested in cyclobutanes, you want to make one complicated structure, want to control the, the steric chemistry, take a look at our signature rhodium catalyst. They're really suitable for this reaction. Yeah, so I hope you found this interesting. Thank you for your interest in this topic and bye-bye.